The DBCI and NPA say they had secured arrest warrants for the lead suspects in the Steinhoff matter. Arrest warrants were issued for Marcus Euster and Stefanos Hrobler on Wednesday. The suspects were expected to hand themselves over to the Pretoria Central Police Station and thereafter appear in the Pretoria Specialised Commercial Crimes Court yesterday. Euster shot himself on Thursday afternoon just 24 hours or so after the FSCA had fined him 475 million rand and announced his intention to initiate a criminal case against him. For more on this, let's speak to Daily Maverick journalist Pauli van Fake. Pauli, appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on to the show. Just give us a sense, if you might, into Marcus Eustace's mindset leading up to his reported suicide, particularly when you consider the impending arrest, the hefty fine from the financial sector conduct authority that had just been issued. Good afternoon. Um, thanks for having me. Yeah, two important things happened the day before Marcus Eustace committed suicide in Armanus. The one was that the FSCA slapped him with a 475 million rand fine, which he may or may not have had the energy to challenge. And um, this, this the additional they were the FSCA would have initiated more criminal charges, a further criminal investigation and brought into US station in uh, Halting and uh, allow himself to be arrested. So two important things uh, that he clearly declined to do. Now we're reading an article that used to have been maintaining his innocence in recent interviews with the FSCA. Could you elaborate on his stance and how it aligned with the accusations that were leveled against him? Uh, your phone just broke up there. Can you repeat that please? So you still have been maintaining his innocence in recent interviews with the FSCA. Would you be able to elaborate on how his thoughts align with the accusations that were leveled against him? Yeah, so you still has uh, since uh, the earliest days, uh, since he was asked to uh, explain um, irregularities in the annual financial statements way back in 2017, he said that he was uh, innocent and that nothing seemed to be or were like it seemed to be. Um, and that was the exact same thing here. It was There was an implicit meaning there where Marcus uh, and Eustace told the rest of the world that if you want to accuse me, you had better prove it. Uh, and that was uh, what this showdown would have come down to. So obviously a number of charges that were leveled against him and, and obviously that fine of 475 million uh, rand that he was expected to, to settle somehow, which might have triggered what, what transpired. But we also know that he was also in trouble at some point with the, with the German authorities. Was it on similar issues? Yeah, so we will remember that Steiner was listed in Frankfurt and in Amsterdam. And so a part of, or a big part of what happened um, and why Steiner imploded in the end of a, a litany of cross-border transactions, uh, which was used to hide uh, that some of the profit-making companies weren't so profitable as they were seen to be. Um, a lot of those companies were papered over, the uh, profits were artificially inflated, and it was used, these companies and payments were used cross-border, so it was very difficult to track. Now, the German courts initiated an investigation and in the end a prosecution into the German leg of what transpired at Steinhoff. Now, Paulie, what role did D Dirk Schreiber's corporation play in the legal proceedings against Euster and other Steinhoff executives? He was a senior manager in the German leg of the operation, a financial manager, and uh, in the end he offered a lot of help to the German courts, which allowed him a lesser sentence of about three and a half years. And he also said to uh, have helped the local authorities quite a lot, and that seems to be very important uh, in the local case against Marcus Jöster as well as Stian Grobler. I suppose one, one of the questions that's on many people's minds is how did he get away uh, with this fixing, for want of a better description, for, for so long? Are there many mm -hmm. other people that haven't been implicated that will potentially uh, would be implicated? Yeah, such a good question. So, so it's complex. In only in the fact that it was cross-border transactions. So it's not complex because this guy was a complete genius or um, was smarter than the rest. It's simply because of 
company secrecy and because it's very difficult to trace money across border and because there was a cult of personality built around my producer. People believed in the Midas touch that this person had and that he had this mythical ability to make a lot of people a lot of money. Now, that was literally only a myth because he had bought a lot of lemons just like the next person, um, although that he also was a really good businessman. In this particular case, he then uh, tried to hide the lemons, tried to hide the lesser profit-making businesses, all those businesses who were losing a lot of money. And that he assisted, was assisted in by moving money between companies that ostensibly did no, have no link to either him or Sinoff or to any people around him across a, a variety of borders. So it made it very, very difficult to trace. Now, that entire scheme that I'm just uh, explaining cannot be done by one person. Mm. It immediately tells us that you must be correct, and there's evidence for that, that there was a lot of people who bought into what Marcus told them to do and who assisted him. And it's most definitely not only Sian Krobe who is in court now. So we hope that the NPA um, and the prosecutors will also remember to prosecute uh, the rest of the people who assisted Marcus, and uh, we may also be in for a surprise about who will be uh, will be revealed as fake witness. Polly, there's there's always got to be some form of oversight in in a corporate or corporation as as big as the Steinoff was, and one would imagine that you you have a board of directors that offers some form of oversight. So the question is. Where was the board of directors while all this was happening? Then you talk about much externalization, or that a lot of the transactions were, were cross-border. How did he evade the South African Reserve Bank in doing this for, for so long? Yeah, exactly. So, so let's start with the first question. There's, um, these payments were, uh, were assisted with, obviously, with by a, a number of people around him. And, and when you ensure that the auditors, the lawyers the financial directors, the executive managers, the non-executive managers, all of those people buy into your cult of personality. And on the other hand, if you start shaming them, and that's what really, really smart and obviously very devious CEOs or uh, business managers tend to do, is that they shame people into saying, but don't you understand this transaction? Don't you understand what we're doing here? Maybe you don't you don't deserve a seat at the table. And many people uh, told us, witnesses told us, that that was how Marcus did business. So that on the one hand, if you create this cult of personality, people either are too ashamed or either too greedy not to buy in to what you're telling them to do. And this is what happened. They were also examples of people having walked away completely and not buying into it. So that's on the one hand the problem. On the other hand, uh, is that this is not a new scam, right? So we can see it in the VBS problem too. The, the bank managers, the um, the uh, uh, executive directors, the auditors, all of uh, they, it usually takes a group of people to conspire together. In the Reserve Bank instance, where we talk about cross-border transactions, Daily Maverick revealed uh, two about two weeks ago that it seems like Steinoff had an inside person. So it was a, a former divisional manager at the financial surveillance department at the Reserve Bank, Raymond Paula, has now been accused by the Reserve Bank of having been too much in favor of Steinoff when he uh, signed off on a number of exchange control applications. Now, everyone who listened to us who do international uh, business will know that they, if they want to externalize or remit money across the border, they will have to ask the Reserve Bank for um, make an application to do that. Now, those applications have sort of been mitigated, if you will, by small gifts what, or small bribes, if you will, what the Reserve Bank now um, accused their former employee of receiving cases of wine or horse racing tips. Um, so Raymond Paula is said to have been um, in collusion with Marcus Huerta and another former Reserve Bank employee who then worked for the Reserve Bank, Chris Revere. So we don't know yet. Um, that hasn't been heard, that kind of case. Uh, the disciplinary hearing hasn't been concluded. 
Raymond Tala has been uh, ousted out of the Reserve Bank. He resigned before the case against him could be heard and decided. Uh, so that case needs to go to a criminal court for us to hear what exactly happened. Paulie, the, the million dollar question is what lessons do we learn from what transpired with Steinhoff? And are there any laws that have been amended uh, in order to, to deal with the size um, of the fraud that took place? Mm, laws have been amended. So, so, you know, we, I mean, this is a very extensive conversation, but very briefly we can point to some of the factors, uh, the uh, financial sector's um, recent grey listing and the Treasury and the Reserve Bank um, and SARS trying really hard to ensure that South Africa gets off the grey list. And there have been tweaks to some of our financial um, laws. So we know that trusts, for example, um, now that we the laws have been tightened around the management of trusts and about um, ultimate beneficiaries. So that's just one way of where this kind of thing would try and at least shine light on, on people's crimes in terms of financial money movements um, and maybe cross-border movements as well. But I think what we actually need to try and strengthen are the auditors' um, bodies, like SICA and people who really, who watch the watches is actually the question here. If the auditors did not pick up what Marcus Lusa and the financial directors and the executives were doing inside Steinhoff, how could anyone have been aware if the people inside did not even had a sharp eye enough to mm. know what was happening. Or, or maybe they simply looked away. You know, that can also happen. And either way, it shouldn't have happened. It, this, the, the country shouldn't have lost so much money. And may I just remember, very few people remember this, but after Steiner had imploded at the time, um, after December 2017, a lot of people committed suicide because they lost everything they had thanks to uh, they, they, um, thanks to the implosion of Steinhoff. So this sounds like a tragedy for the family of U.S. and any person who may or may not yet be um, accused of committing crimes. But it was actually more of a tragedy for the people who had shares in Steinhoff and who lost their entire livelihood. Yeah, when you, when you listen to that story, it is uh, extremely unfortunate. You, you're absolutely right. Uh, we must remember those people. But finally, uh, Paulie, how does Eustace's reported suicide impact on the in ongoing investigations and legal proceedings surrounding the Steinhoff scandal? Mm, I've probed a few people about that, a um, few people who would know. So it wouldn't really touch on or impact the investigation itself. What I think it would impact, however, would be the defense of anyone accused. You know, it's very easy always, and it, this will not be a novel case, but it's, it's been like that before. So it's always easy to blame the dead guy for everything. Mm -hmm. And we know that Marcus just has been central to what had happened at Steinhoff. But again, let's not make this guy a genius and a venerable person who should be revered. There were a number of people who colluded and ensured that he had to, he could do this and that he could move the money across board and that he could initiate these scams. Paulie van Vake, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for unpacking uh, those issues around the Steiner saga and Marcus Eustace's tragic passing.